In this video, I'm gonna share a little secret with you. I'm gonna share my three favorite vanilla JavaScript snippets that I use in Visual Studio Code. But don't tell anyone. So first off, if you're new to the channel, my name is James Hugh Quick, and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. And in this one, I'm gonna share with you my three favorite snippets, JavaScript snippets, that I use inside of Visual Studio Code. Now, first off, the question is, what are snippets inside of VS Code? Well, they're little shorthands that you can use to create blocks of code, and you can have placeholders that you can tab through. They're called tab stops to fill in different pieces of information that you need for a snippet. If you were to create a snippet that goes through, that iterates through an array, it would stub out a for loop. You'd have the name of the array, your counter, which is probably I, and then you might have a variable to get the element out of the array, stuff like that. I think the best way to do this is just to show you what it's like. So let's go ahead and dive into VS Code and I'll show you exactly what my favorite snippets for vanilla JavaScript are. All right, so I'm inside of Visual Studio Code. This is actually the source code for a project uh, that I did on YouTube a few weeks ago, which was building an image gallery with vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So if you want to, there's a link to that that you can go check out. But in here, I want you to, I want to show you a few different things that I'm doing. Three examples or the first three lines here, actually an example of one of the snippet, one of my favorite snippets. And this is where, this is something I have to do all the time when I'm doing vanilla JavaScript demos is get a reference to a, a DOM element by its ID. So you call document.get element by ID, and then you give it the name of that element that you're looking for, the ID that you're looking for. Well, the thing that's cool here is that uh, all of this code looks the exact same except for the name of the variable and the ID. And then the ID and the variable here are the same. So I'll show you how I use a snippet to simplify that in a minute. Now, the other thing I do is add an event listener. This is very common for vanilla JavaScript. We add event listeners, click listeners. Uh, what are the other listeners? I don't know. Mainly click events is what I listen for. And they uh, take the DOM element that you're looking for or the DOM element that you're referencing and then stubbing out a, a callback function. I use arrow functions in this case to kind of complete that. The last thing, this is not an example that I have in here that I do all the time is make fetch request. And so if you make a fetch request, you might say uh, fetch data from some API. And then if you're doing this with async await, you might say const response is await fetch and then we want to convert that to JSON. So we say await res.json, but then you can't use await unless it's in a function. So you have to create a function. Then you have to handle errors with try catch and it becomes a whole thing. So although the, the really the only amount of code that changes is the URL that I'm trying to get data from, I have to stub out a bunch of code. So that's what snippets are here for us to help do inside of VS Code. So let's take a look. Inside of your gear icon, you can go to user snippets and then uh, snippets are tracked by language. So they're in JSON files and they're different per language. So in this case, go down and, and grab JavaScript. And I'm going to show you my three favorite ones are right here. So the first one is the get element by ID. So if you notice, if I take this line up here and just copy this and then paste it down here and then tab over, you can see this is almost the exact same as what I have listed in here. So this element has a prefix of get ID. I'll show you that in a second. The body is the actual snippet itself. And you can see that almost matches one for one, the code that I just showed you. And then you can have a description of this as well. So what is this dollar sign L right here? Well, you can uh, use dollar signs to be tab stop. So this is different variables that you wanna fill in information in the snippet. And then because this has a name of L, uh, and because it matches the same thing over here, I'm going to go ahead and assume that the variable name that I choose will match up with the ID that I have on the right. So what does this look like? Well, let's get rid of this. Let's save it. Let's go back. And instead of typing out all of this information up here, if I wanted to do pop up, I can do get ID. There's my snippet. Now I press enter. Notice where my tab is. So my tab is on this first element over here, but it's also multiple cursored. Is that a verb? And so I have a reference to both of these and I can now name this pop-up. And then I could come down and do get ID and gallery. See how fast that is? I don't have to type out all the like rest of the code. I can just type in basically the snippet identifier and then the name of the variable I want, which will then be copied over or used at the same time for the ID. Pretty sweet stuff. Now, the other thing I mentioned is the event listener. So same idea here. I start to uh, trigger my event listener snippet the prefix is add event. I don't have a description here because I don't really need it. 
and you see something similar. So this looks like it's calling at event listener, but then you see a few different things that now look a little bit odd. So one of the tricky things about doing snippets inside of VS Code is that if your uh, snippet takes more than one line, it becomes an array of strings. And you can see that in here, where this would be the first line, this would be the second, and actually maybe this would make it a little bit easier, although it's a little tricky to read anyway. So what this is doing in here, we have a tab stop here. Now, instead of a name as EL, we use a number. So this is saying this is gonna be tab stop number one, this is going to be tab stop number two, and then the final tab stop where we want the cursor to end, where we're actually ready to fill out what's inside of our function is tab stop zero. So that might be confusing. Let's take a look at this again. So we'll do our uh, add event. That's my snippet there, you can see it. Now I enter. Now what's the name of the element I'm working with? Well, it's pop up. And then I tab over. That's why these are tab stops because you tab over to the next place. You say this is gonna be a click event. Tab over one more time, and now we go to the closing tab, uh, or the last tab, the last tab stop, which is going to be the middle of this function. Now, one thing I could do here is I could come back to this tab zero, and I could do a backslash T. This would make sure, let's do this again, this will make sure that I have that in, indented tab for what goes inside the, uh, the callback function. So I could do add event, pop up click tab and now I'm ready to do pop up dot style, whatever the rest of the code is that I do. All right. And then the last one is if I'm making a fetch request, again, there's not an example of that in here, but that's okay. So inside of a fetch request, I need a I need to I have a try catch so I can handle errors, I need to make a call to a URL, I need to get the response back, then convert that to data. Uh, anyway, so let's do actually I'll show you one additional uh, thing in here, uh, arrow function. I created an arrow function one where I can do call this load data. And then now I can put my cursor right in here. So uh, we also want to mark this as a sync because I use fetch with async. So inside of load data, I can now do my fetch. If I come down to the user snippet, you can see it's all laid out there. And now I need to type in the API, do slash API. And now I've got all that code laid out, including error handling with the try catch now to handle this. Now I took this one step further. I need to actually look at the name for load data function. I actually have this whole thing, load data func is that whole thing. So I could call this load data tab over and then I get the same experience, but it already stubs out the actual function itself. So a couple of really quick and easy, but really useful things I use all the time, JavaScript snippets in VS Code here. All right, hopefully you enjoyed the video, checking out snippets in VS Code. It's pretty, pretty dope. It can save you lots of time, and it's just really handy and neat and kind of fun to play around with. So let me know what your favorite snippets are in VS Code for working with vanilla JavaScript in the comments below. Thanks as always for checking out the video, and I'll catch you next time.